We've been talking a lot about Studio Ghibli in the past year or so. Up to now, we've covered the better part of the production house's output from Miyazaki and several of its less prolific directors. With Miyazaki Mondays having just drawn to a close, one might be led to wonder what the future of Ghibli might hold besides Miyazaki's newest supposed last film. Truth be told, as we covered in our video on the documentary Never Ending Man, Ghibli's own prospects don't seem too high. This is because most of the studio's current staff is not shared with all of the best-loved films of the past three decades. Naturally, all of the staff who left when the newest announcement about Ghibli's closure hit had to go somewhere. Enter Studio Ponok, the company behind today's centerpiece. Studio Ponok was formed in 2015 by several former members of Studio Ghibli. After the release of both The Wind Rises and The Tale of Princess Kaguya in 2013, Ghibli's output grounded to a halt. In fact, only one more film was released by Ghibli before it was formally announced that the movie production house would shut its doors for good. This final film, when Marnie was there, was helmed by Hiromasa Yonebayashi. Yonebayashi had made his name with Ghibli primarily as an animator and animation director before becoming a proper director with The Secret World of Arietti and, later, Marnie. Not long after this latter film's release, Yonobayashi decided to leave Ghibli alongside senior staff member and producer Yoshiaki Nishimura. Together, the two founded their own animation house, which was to become Ponok the following year. The duo and their staff quickly got to work and produced the 2017 film Mary and the Witch's Flower. This feature debut for Ponok won over moviegoers and critics alike, scoring high box office numbers and high review scores in succession. This feature wasn't the only project up Ponok's sleeve, however. In August 2018, Ponok released their second film into theaters, though perhaps the singular film is a bit of a misnomer here. Rather than being a feature, this second project, known as Modest Heroes, took the form of a short film collection, clocking in at just under an hour in total. The three films contained within serve to both pull together a theme, as described by the title, as well as putting on display the abilities of Ponok's staff. Each film is directed by a different man. The first is by Yonobayashi himself. The second is by animator and director Yoshiaki Momose, known to have worked with Ghibli since Grave of the Fireflies. And the third is by Ghibli veteran character designer Akihiko Yamashita. In a way, these three films allow the directors to flex their creative muscles while showcasing the visual wonder that the young studio is capable of. For those interested, the film is out today in America, courtesy G-Kids and Shout Factory on Blu-ray and DVD, meaning that if this video piques your interest, the collection is easily available already. The first film, titled Kanini and Kanino, is a mostly silent narrative revolving around tiny people living underwater in a stream. The family that we follow live as a group hiding out from the comparatively massive fish that inhabit their watery home. Together, the two children of the family must trek their way beyond their comfort zone and learn to be true heroes, no matter how small of a scale on which this may be. The second film, Life Ain't Gonna Lose, follows a very young boy whose mother struggles to cope with his severe egg allergy. She attempts to pursue her career as a dancer, but the boy experiences anaphylaxis at the mere suggestion of eggs. This means that his frequent states of shock pull his mother away from her solo path in life. Through the duo's interactions and efforts to learn with one another, we again experience a tale of modest heroism. The final film, Invisible, follows an invisible man through a day in his life. We're never exactly clear if he is actually invisible to others, or if he merely feels invisible. Either way, the invisible man trudges through his days, downtrodden and saddened by his lack of notice from others. We don't want to spoil anything, but let's just say that in his own way, the invisible man seems to find some amount of purpose through his own heroism. This collection of short films is a delight for anyone pining after the glory days of Studio Ghibli, or those who ever wondered what the underlings of Miyazaki and Takahata were capable of. This anthology is sure to excite any animation fan at the prospects for Ponok's future. What's more, Modest Heroes is given the subtitle Ponok Short Films Theater Volume 1, indicating that there might be more to come from the studio in terms of these short film anthologies. Given how difficult, if not impossible, it is to get your hands on some of the short films from Ponok's forerunner, Ghibli, it's refreshing to finally see what some of the talent shared between the two has to offer in terms of smaller scale projects. Give this one a look, and let us know what you think in the comments below, and stay tuned for whatever the future of Studio Ponok may contain.